Bodybuilding is very much subjective. Some even call it an art instead of a sport. Which is why you're welcome to disagree with me, but it is my opinion that this man, Steve Reeves, was the greatest bodybuilder of all time. I will be making a video specifically about his training methods, so if that sounds interesting, make sure to subscribe to the channel. But for now, let us take a closer look at the man himself. Steve Reeves was born in 1926 in a small town in Montana. Sadly, Steve never got to know his father as he died in a farming accident just a year after Steve was born. At age 10, Steve and his mother would move down to California. And just a couple years later in high school is where Steve would first develop an interest in bodybuilding. He started seriously training at age 15 and his physique would begin to develop pretty quickly. In this photo, he's only 16 years old, but we can see he was already very muscular for his age. Just another year later, at 17, we can see Steve already managed to develop an impressive, well-balanced, and very aesthetic physique. I'm not usually one to comment on genetics, but no matter how hard he trained, it's undeniable that he had incredible genetics to be looking like this naturally at only 17. Just looking at his insertions and symmetry, it's already clear that he has the potential to be a truly great bodybuilder. At age 18, Steve's bodybuilding journey would face a major interruption. The year was 1944 and World War II was raging on. Now that Steve had come of age, he was quickly drafted into the United States Army as soon as he graduated high school. He received a couple months of training in California and then was shipped off to fight in the Philippines. Here he would be involved in a long and deadly battle where he would witness the many horrors of war. But on top of all that, he would also contract malaria, which was then made worse by a serious case of jungle fever. Steve would spend many weeks in the hospital, and the war would end by the time he recovered. But his service would not end there, and Steve would be sent up to Japan as part of the Allied Occupation Force, where he would stay until September 1946. After 26 months of service, Steve was finally discharged and sent back to California. Upon his return, Steve would quickly pick back up where he left off, and only a couple months later, in December 1946, he would enter and win the Mr. Pacific Coast Contest, which was held in Portland, Oregon. In June 1947, Steve would compete in the Mr. America Contest in Chicago. And at just 21 years of age, he would win the world's most prestigious bodybuilding competition and be crowned Mr. America. Steve would continue to have a successful bodybuilding career for several more years. In 1948, he would come a close second place to Clarence Ross in the Mr. USA competition and again a close second to the great John Grimek in the Mr. Universe competition. But he would end up winning the Mr. World competition held in the same year in France. Here we have Steve Reeves, Mr. America and Mr. World, 1948. Maybe he got these muscles through a correspondence course. Some male that she liked, and that, of course, I didn't like. In 1950, Steve would win Mr. Universe, leaving second place to Reg Park. At his peak, Steve stood at 6 foot 1 or 185 centimeters tall and weighed around 216 pounds or 98 kilos. His biceps, calves, and neck each measured over 18 inches, while his chest measured 52 inches, his waist 29 inches, and his thighs 26 inches. During his bodybuilding career and for many years after, Steve would be featured in dozens of popular muscle magazines, like Health and Strength, Your Physique, 
muscle power and very many more. Once Steve felt he had accomplished everything he wanted in bodybuilding, he shifted his focus to acting. His first big break would come in 1957 when he starred in the blockbuster movie Hercules. Steve's powerful and muscular physique made him the perfect fit to play such a heroic character. The movie's success would quickly make Steve an international movie star. He would become the highest paid actor of his time and would go on to star in over a dozen more movies until the late 1960s. Steve was possibly the very first bodybuilder to find success in acting and he would pave the way for Arnold Schwarzenegger and others to do the same in the coming years. A shoulder injury would force Steve to retire from acting. At this point, he had earned enough money to purchase a large ranch in Oregon and live very comfortably. Later, he would purchase another ranch in California, which would serve as his home until his death. Steve would continue to promote health, fitness, and natural bodybuilding for the rest of his life. Yeah, that, that's the thing, you see. Uh... During my time, I believe that bodybuilding was a health-oriented uh, sport. Where now it's, a, it's unhealthy, chemical-induced gains and all that. While several books would be written about him, Steve would author three books himself later in life. The first one was published in 1982 and was called Power Walking. Here he would promote a walking style he invented where you take long strides and walk quickly while swinging weights in your hands. His system also incorporated progressive overload by requiring you to slowly use heavier dumbbells over time. He recommended this for anyone looking to improve their general fitness, but also as a great form of low injury risk cardio for bodybuilders. Steve said, quote, Power walking is an ideal supplemental exercise for the bodybuilder. It works on the progressive resistance principle, is performed at high intensity, creates an aerobic effect, burns fat, and provides the detailed muscular cuts every bodybuilder strives for. Power walking is also virtually injury free. It doesn't have the up and down injury causing jolting motion which you encounter while jogging. When power walking, you take a smooth progression of steps with one foot remaining on the ground at all times. His second book was published in 1995 and was called Building the Classic Physique, The Natural Way. And his third and final book, Dynamic Muscle Building, was published in 2003, a couple years after his death. In these two books, Steve reveals his bodybuilding system and gives advice for building muscle, posing, losing fat, and improving nutrition. Unfortunately, they are now quite difficult to find and expensive, but I would love to get my hands on these two books. Anyway, to wrap up the story, even though Steve had a lifelong focus on health and wished to live to 100... Would you have ever taken steroids, even if you were available? No, never, then? never, never, because it's not health-oriented. Yeah. I mean, I, I plan to live to be 100. I don't know if I'll make it, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to try. And that there w would get me dead at 65, probably. He tragically passed away in the year 2000 at age 74. He died from a blood clot just two days after having a surgery. If he actually did make it to 100 years old like he wanted, he would still be alive today. Steve didn't have children and is not survived by any immediate family. But of course, his legacy will live on forever. Personally, Steve Reeves is my favorite bodybuilder. And in my eyes, he was the greatest of all time. As I said in the beginning, I will be making a video specifically about his training, but I thought an exploration of this great man's life and achievements deserved a video of its own. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more videos similar to this, make sure to check out the Old School Bodybuilding playlist. And let me know in the comments who your favorite bodybuilder is. Thank you for watching.